Hello everyone, my name is Adam Repos Vox, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a bootable USB drive in order to boot into an operating system, be it Windows or Linux. We're going to use an Ubuntu Linux variant here in this video as our prime example. However, this will work with pretty much anything. I do recommend having at least a 4 gigabyte USB drive, and if you're doing Windows, I would actually like a modern Windows 8, 8.1, 10, etc. I, I would actually recommend an 8 gigabyte flash drive or larger. I'm using an 8 gigabyte even though my Ubuntu ISO is actually only 1.23 gigs. So let's get into it. This is going to be for totally free, by the way. Now for the purposes of this, you will need a totally free program called Rufus. You know how I like my free apps, and this is a totally free app. Download link will be in the description below. It's just an EXE. You don't have to install it or anything like that. And then you will need an ISO of whatever operating system you wish to install. If it's Windows for like Windows 10 and things like that, you can actually get a, a an ISO of the operating system for free from Windows nowadays. I will post like or from Microsoft. I will post a couple download links to that in the description below as well. But I'm actually going to be using here, I'm going to be using Ubuntu GNOME 16.04 Beta. Now, the full release will probably be out by the time you watch this video, but that's not what's important. What's important here is the process. So once you have these two files and you know where they are, go ahead and open up Rufus. Accept the security prompt and wait for it to open. All right, you want to make 100% certain before you even do anything else. Under device, make sure you select your correct device. Now it will be labeled by both drive letter, size, and the name of the device. So by default, mine actually selected the SDXC card for my camera, which I don't want to use. So you want to make sure you're choosing the right device, that way you're not overwriting anything. So you can look in here, and I can see the devices I have are uh, one SD card, another SD card, and then the device here, which is an 8GB that I called BoxKit, and it already was loaded with some stuff that I don't actually want on here, so I'm going to totally reformat it and start over. So VoxKit F 8GB is selected. I'm going to call it Ubu GNOME 1604. And then here, and so, so you give it a volume label. That is the name that it shows up in this PC, like this one shows up as VoxKit. You choose your device with the drop-down menu. Now you can choose which one of these, uh, which one of the, like, the basically how it boots you wish the default should work it'll work with both bios and UE, uefi bios so it'll work with pretty much anything and then the file system formatting for most devices or for most os's you'll still want to use fat32 but nowadays things are starting to support ntfs and xfat as bootable bootable devices more and more but the default here and for cluster size should work for you check device for bad blocks you can do that if you wish I'm not going to, but that'll help make sure that none of the file, none of the blocks or files, the data structure on the actual device after you burn the ISO to it. It's a, this is essentially like burning a CD or DVD. Uh, once you burn the disk image to it, are corrupt or anything like that. I'm not worried about it. It should work fine the first try. Quick format means the formatting of it to FAT32 goes quickly instead of the long form one. That'll be fine for this purpose. Create a bootable disk image. That is, of course, what we want to do. And then it create extended label icon files. Leave that checked. But we want to check create a bootable disk using, and you either have FreeDOS, which it supports by default just built in, a DD image or an ISO image. For this, we're going to be using an ISO image. Now this is where you select your Windows, Ubuntu, what have you. I'm going to be selecting my Ubuntu GNOME, or you could select Windows, blah, 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 blah. And you see, it actually already went ahead and changed my label, so there, were, there was no reason for me to do that, but it changed it to Ubuntu GNOME 16.04 LTS AMD 64-bit, which is what I want. It says ready. Again, double check before you click anything. Double check that your device is correct. And click start. Ah, it actually throw, threw me an error because the version of Linux that I'm trying to install is actually newer than what Rufus is supporting by default. So I'm clicking yes. If this happens to you, click yes to download the new files. So I'm just going to click yes and it's going to update everything. And then it says that the ISO that I selected is an ISO hybrid image, which means it can be bounded is in both ISO or DD mode. I already have ISO mode and that's what it recommends. 
So that's what I'm going to choose. If you know specifically what you're doing, you can choose DD. Now both of these previous pop-up windows may not happen to you and probably won't happen to you if you're using a non-beta Linux OS or a Windows OS or something like that. So don't worry about it too much, but basically yes and okay are going to work for me here. So I'm gonna click okay. Warning, all data on the device you have selected, again, double check, triple check this now. VoxKit F8 gigabyte will be destroyed. To continue with the operation, click OK, or to quit, cancel. If that's not the device you selected, click cancel. Otherwise, you're OK. Important, this drive contains multiple partitions. This may happen to you as well. Blah, 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 blah. Are you, you know, are you sure you want to do it? Yes, it will get rid of all of those on the device. So definitely make sure it's not a drive that you're storing data on. And then simply let it do its thing. All right, in here, it's actually telling me that the USB drive that, I, that I'm trying to use, it can't access. It, access is being restricted by some app that already mounted the, the flash drive. If this happens to you, unplug it, plug it back in, try again. Alright, so what actually happened was my audio recorder was actually the thing that was automatically mounting and taking control of my USB drive. So when I told it to force dismount, it crashed my audio recording program. Thankfully, I was able to recover my audio file. So we are just finishing up these steps here. It installed ISO Linux or Sys Linux and is now copying the rest of the files from the ISO and then it will be bootable from your computer. You'll just have to go into your BIOS, select the USB device and boot away. And that is it. So if you, if you encounter that same issue I did, which you probably shouldn't, then you just know to close all programs and unplug and replug the drive and it should work then. Something to speed this up in both copying the files to it to make it mountable and making it readable and in your installation times and things like that is the faster your drive, be it USB 3 versus USB 2 or just a newer flash drive versus an older one, the faster your flash drive is, the faster this whole process is going to go as well as your actual operating system installation is going to go because if it can read and write it faster from the USB drive, it's going to overall perform faster for these functions. And once it's done, it goes back to saying ready and it has a timer at the bottom showing how long it's spent doing the function. And that's it. If I go back into this PC, hit refresh, you'll see Ubuntu GNOME because that's all the title could fit, even though it formatted it with like the whole title. It's just Ubuntu GNOM. Nom nom nom. And 28.4 gigs is still free on it, so I could put some other files on here, like if I had files I needed to copy over after I installed it, I could go ahead and throw it on there. This is useful if it recognizes it like this um, for Windows installation, because then you could go on and throw on any drivers you may need. That way you don't have to worry about downloading them after you finish installing. But that's it. Then restart your computer, go to the BIOS, and select that flash drive and boot to it and you're good to go. Hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos and otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.